It's the most wonderful time of the year, and we're so glad you joined us today for the Accelerate Church broadcast with Pastor Jeremy File. Today, he's ministering on the real meaning of Christmas. Well, we don't want to miss it. Let's jump right into it now. During this time of the year, especially in Christmas time, the enemy attacks, and people many times get depressed during this time of the year. But no longer you, because once you listen and pay attention to this, I believe this, and you understand the real meaning, which most of you pretty much do, but as we look at these details, it'll come alive. As you understand the real meaning, it'll cause joy to rise up on the inside of you. Let me tell you something. The enemy is after your joy, because that's your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Say it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's a fact. That's a scripture in Nehemiah. Let me just tell you this. If the enemy can steal your joy, he can steal your strength. So why do you think he manipulates circumstances, situations, uses people, and all kinds of different things going on in this culture? Sometimes it's our senators. Sometimes it's our congressmen. Sometimes it's our president. Sometimes it's our news anchors, right? On down the list we could go to try to manipulate things. And guess what? We're not going to be moved. We're going to stick to the truth. Say amen if you believe that. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. We're looking at the real meaning of Christmas. It says that a whole heavenly host said, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. Yeah, peace and goodwill toward men. The king showed up, and that's why we celebrate Christmas. He was born and put in a manger. Yeah. Yeah. As the Lamb of God should be. Isn't that something? Coming in such humble beginnings. Yet he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And let me tell you, heaven marked this moment. We should mark this moment and we should celebrate. Don't fall for the lies of the enemy that you shouldn't celebrate Christmas. No, you should celebrate it and let your light shine brighter than ever before. You don't know who's out there hurting. You don't know who needs to hear from you. Uh, my wife and I today, we're, we got to sneak away for about an hour of time. and it's about all we could whittle away in our schedule. And we got to do a little Christmas shopping. And wouldn't you know it, God had us cross paths with someone who said, I just feel like I need to talk to y'all and tell you my story. And she did. And she said, you know what? What are y'all, ministers? We said, yeah, we are. She said, I'm going to come to your church. <laughs> Praise God. I said, well, come on. I told Aaron, I said, you know, this is what happens when you pray in the Holy Ghost every day and you pray for divine appointments and you better get ready for God to use you. Now, hold up. If you're burdened down with all kinds of burdens of life, all kinds of offenses, you're barely making it through. Let me just tell you this. You're not going to be shining a light very bright out there. But see, this is why you've got to stay in fellowship with God every day because he wants to use you to bring him glory. All of heaven came and said, hey, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill, showing us God has turned his goodwill toward all mankind. Glory to God. Well, I'll just cut to the chase. I don't have time to connect all these dots tonight. I've just got to hitch my wagon where we left off Sunday, you know what I mean? And I'll just tell you, covenant is what the Christmas season is really all about. The fact that Jesus was born as a lamb shows you that God was covenant-minded in this. And he found a man way back in the Old Testament, Abraham, that was willing to give his son for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you this. God said, when I found a man, now I'm willing to give it all for you. And me, thank God, Father Abraham, the father of faith. Amen? So God cut a covenant with him. We're going to talk more about that tonight because uh, hopefully as we go in this, you'll see, ah, I see it. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Go to Ephesians 2 and say, thank God for the word. word. Ephesians 2.11 says, therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called on circumcision by what is called circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time, verse 12 says, you were without Christ. Say, without Christ. Christ. Yeah. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and look at this part, strangers from the covenants of promise. Isn't that something? It then says, having no hope and without God in this world. So, 
I wanted to bring this back up so that you understand and you can connect with where we're going in this series. No covenant equals no hope. However, when you know about your covenant, then it produces hope. Covenant always produces hope. So no matter how dark maybe the situation is, let me tell you, when you have a covenant with God, you can know, hey, I don't know what the doctor's saying right now, but I know what my covenant says. I don't, know how, I don't know why things are looking the way they're looking right now, but I know what my covenant says. Come on, somebody. I'm thinking about Tim Elliott right now. When the doctor told him, well, if your wife has this baby, then either the baby or her is going to die. You, you choose. He said, no, I know my covenant. I know my covenant. Just imagine, Tim, what that would have been like that night if you had not known your covenant. Oh, all, I mean, it would have been a whirlwind, wouldn't it? But see, when you know your covenant, hmm. Man, you, it just makes you immovable. It causes you to be established. I know we're living in the end times. I know the enemy's coming for you. He's coming for me. And he wants to uproot us and get us where we're not established like we're supposed to be. And I'm here to tell you, you've got to stay established. This is why we celebrate Christmas. It's the real meaning of Christmas, to stay in covenant with God. You've got to stay rooted you got to stay grounded in covenant with God. This is warfare. Yeah, it is. It's warfare. If you haven't noticed. How many of you notice uh, yeah, the warfare comes to staying rooted? Be honest. Be honest in here. I'm not even looking. I don't have to look at you. I'm just be honest before God. This is warfare. It is warfare. And we better become really good at being able to recognize demonic influence. Because there's always a temptation to move away from what and where God calls you, especially when a demon's involved, the pressure's going to be amped up. Now, I want you to remember, according to Colossians 1, we've been reconciled with God. Isn't that good news? And this is where we left off Sunday. Look at Colossians 1, 23. We've been reconciled with God if... <laughs> A lot of people love to just focus on the reconciled part, but not the if part. Because the if part turns it to you and to me. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? The good news is that now the door of heaven is open. God has extended his hand. The fact that we sing the veil has been torn. It means the door of covenant now is wide open if you so choose to repent of your sins and enter into covenant with God. And that covenant produces hope. And in fact, you'll find this, and this is where we're going that's so powerful, covenant and hope are interchangeable. So when I read this, I said, wow, look at this. I've got to be a person that's committed to continue in the faith. I've got to be grounded. I like that. I've got to be steadfast. And I've got to not be moved away from my covenant. Mm. Which I've heard, which is preached to every creature under heaven, which I, Paul, have become a minister. What is it? I want you to ask yourself this. Don't answer out loud. What is it that's trying to get you to move away from covenant with God? What is it? Yeah, think about it. Is it friends? It could be friends. Yeah. Some people, I talk about that all the time. James 4.4 4 says friendship with the world makes you hostile, an enemy of God. 1 John 2 says you cannot love the things of this world and the love of God be in you at the same time. Well, that's challenging, isn't it? You can't love all the things in this world and God at the same time. You can't serve God and mammon. You've got to choose today whom you're going to serve. And once you make that decision, stick with it. And don't let any demon in hell... Don't let any pressure in life move you from what God told you to do. Amen. What about this? Here's a big one. Can words from humans move you? Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. 
You got to keep your mind renewed with the details of your covenant or you'll lose the whole purpose of church just like we've lost the whole meaning of Christmas. What is it really all about? Gifts that we get or even give? No. What's it about? I love all that stuff. It's about Jesus came and made a way of new covenant. That's what it's about. Now, if you will keep your mind renewed with the covenant, it will protect you like a helmet protects a warrior. Yeah. 1 Thessalonians 5.8. Look at this. Say it. Thank God for the word. It says, but let us who are of the day be sober. Be sober. Now that word sober has several meanings, as you know. One of them is to be free of intoxicants. So be free of them, would you? Amen. And look at what it says. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. See, faith and love work together. They can't work apart. They work together. Some people you got to love by faith, but your faith won't work without love. <laughs> it goes together. But I want you to notice what that is. That's a breastplate. That will protect your heart and your vital organs. Are you following me? But look what it says about a helmet right here. And as a helmet... The what? The hope. What could I interchange there? Covenant of salvation. That's what the new covenant's all about, is that we're saved from hell. We're saved from our sins. We're saved from the debauchery of this world. And if you're not careful and you lose that in your mind, you've set your helmet down. And many, many Christians lose the battle of the mind. you got to keep your mind saturated with covenant details. I mean, saturated, saturated, saturated. I remember we believed God for children, as y'all know that story. I've talked about that all the time. But one thing I don't always talk about is the fear that I had to conquer, especially in that first pregnancy. Because that's a whole new world the first time that, that you're expecting. And I'm telling you right now, fear would try to grip me, especially, you know, that first time around, like, this is the way, this is just the way it is your first time with kids. It's just this way. Don't get offended with me. It's just this way. You don't miss a doctor's appointment. You do everything, I mean, by the book that they take because you're like, I'm doing all this. Why? Because you love them so much, right? But holler back at me once you have the seventh and let me know if you're still doing that. <laughs> Suddenly, you just kind of ease up after a little while. You're like, okay. But I remember going to those doctor's appointments and all these tests they wanted to run, and they said, oh, High risk this, high risk that. There's this, there's that, there's this, there's that. And I mean, it, it literally will get you in fear if you're not careful. Now, that temptation is always there, every pregnancy. But I refuse to yield to it. Let me just tell you this. The pull of the enemy to pull you away from covenant is always there. I'm telling you, don't yield to it. But the pull is always there. There's always going to be an opportunity. There's always going to be. There's always going to be. Hey, you navigate state planet right now, and let's say three years from now, Jesus tarries is coming, which I don't see that happening. But let's just say that it was three years from now, and you still are planted. You won't regret it. But if you let something move you out, oh, it's going to, it's going to cause regret. It will. you got to keep your mind saturated. Stay saturated. saturated. With covenant details. So what, what happened? Well, we knew that we were only able to conceive by the Word of God and getting serious about the Word of God, so we stayed in the Word of God. I didn't move away from that. That's just how, this is what got us here. I don't move away from it now. Now, you study the history of Israel. That's what they would do. They would follow God in His ways. They would prosper. They would increase. Things would go good, and then they would move away from that. Once they got their paneled houses in the plural. See, some of you choke if God wants to give you one house. But what about when he brings you two? That's what he did with Israel, and they don't struggle with that because they understand God, when he's in covenant with you, he wants to prosper you. His way. Not through a covetous sense, through his way, which his way is going to require giving. <laughs> but here's what the Bible says. It. You go look it up. In your paneled houses, you forgot me and thought that you did it got to keep your mind saturated with covenant details. So when all hell's breaking loose, when you're in a battle, even for your life, you better get your mind on your covenant. 
Can't tell you how many times I've talked to my dad about this, how many hospital visits he and I both have made. He's made more than me because he's been around longer. But how many times have we seen this, and anybody could relate to this, someone will be in a fight for their life, you go visit them in the hospital, and they're watching Pat Sajak, Wheel of Fortune. Well, I like that show. I can sit down and watch it and try to solve that with them. I enjoy that. But let me tell you something. I'm not in a fight for my life at that moment. You see what I'm saying? Am I saying it's sin to watch Pat? No. It's not. You might as well smile. You are so serious. You might as well understand this. That ain't sin. But if you're in a fight for your life, what on earth are you doing over there? Ooh, I pick thing tonight. I mean, come on. It's like here the devil is on an all-out attack, and people don't even know how to fight the enemy. They don't have their helmet anywhere near them. They're not saturating their mind with covenant. Let me just tell you, if you're in a fight for your life physically, you better saturate your mind with the covenant details of healing. Amen. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, this reminds me of the story Dr. Barkley tells. You know, he was, y'all know that, Marine leader. And one of the things he did at one point in his life, and I had him tell me the story the other day because I, I had this on my mind. I said, tell me that story again. And what happened is, the military called him, and they wanted to assess why in one area they kept losing battle after battle. So he said, I flew in in that chopper, and he said, I'll never forget it. The chopper didn't even have to land. I already knew the problem. He said, I looked, and I saw those guys, they had their guns leaned up on the wall, their helmets off, their boots off. And he landed, he said, hey, guys, is the enemy going to telegraph you when they're sending in bullets? What are you doing? And I'm here to tell you tonight as your pastor, I love you with all my heart, but my goodness, what are you doing listening to all kinds of stuff out here instead of saturating your mind with the hope of salvation and the fact that you have a covenant where God's promised you no evil shall befall you. No evil can touch your life when you keep yourself away from sin. This isn't the time to get in fear. This isn't the time to debate and think about defecting. This is a time to saturate your mind with covenant details. If you want to win. And if you settle for losing, then okay. But why settle for that? Why stay in a perpetual lifestyle and cycle of losing and losing and losing and losing? You instead get your mind on this. You got to remind yourself of the real meaning of Christmas if you're going to enjoy your Christmas. Because let me tell you, you could receive the gift you think you want and there'll still be an empty feeling inside until you really remind yourself of what's this all about. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. The whole reason that you're even supposed to come to church and serve and follow a pastor is because it's God and His name, Jesus, that called you into His body. He's the head. He's seated in heaven. We're the body. We're here on earth. We're doing the work. He's waiting to kick his feet up and his enemies be made his footstool. That's the work you and I are doing together. God does nothing apart from the local church. Nothing. It's amazing to me. And this isn't new to most of you. You're, again, in a remnant church here. But the temptation to fall away is going to have to do with this right here. It says, in that you've ministered to the saints, and you do minister. And verse 11, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of what? Oh. Where do you get that hope? All the way to when? Well, I don't feel it anymore, so I'm, I'm done with it. No, you use the same diligence to the full assurance of hope or covenant all the way to the end. Yes. To the end. Say it, to the end. To the end. You don't give up halfway through. You go to the end. That you do not become sluggish. Notice this. This is the whole 
thing, guys. A kid and caboodle right here. You can become lazy. But it says don't do that. Instead, imitate those who through faith and patience, the power twins, faith and consistently, constantly the same. Those are the ones that inherit the promises. Now, everybody wants the promises, but they don't necessarily want to demonstrate faith and patience. But that's what's required. Consistency. Constantly staying the same. Anybody feeding on this tonight? Verse 13, 4. When God made a promise to Abraham. All of a sudden he brings up Abraham here. Because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. Let me just tell you, any time you're walking in covenant, you're going to walk in the blessing, and you're going to see multiplication happen in your life. Let me tell you what I'm praying. Are you ready for this? Better buckle your seatbelts. Divine subtraction, then divine addition, so that the teacher can teach us how to multiply. You can't multiply till you learn subtraction, addition, then you get to multiplication. We're right in the middle of the process as a church. Which side are you on? It'll all be determined in time. Verse number 15. And so, after he had patiently quit. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. If he's believing God at 75 for a kid, but he gives up at 85, he doesn't have a kid at 100. It's pretty simple, isn't it? After he had patiently, consistently, constantly staggered not at the promise of God, Romans 4 says. After he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He obtained what a What a blessing. So the word literally tells us just a few verses before, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Oh, yeah, Abraham did that. Giving us a great example to follow. Now I want you to look at this. This is worth you hearing. I was going to preach this Sunday, and I'm just now getting to it at the very tail end here on Wednesday night. It says, for men indeed swear by the greater. And an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. You know what that means? We look at contracts. And when you sign, I sign. We do that for homes. We do that for cars. We do that for all kinds of business deals, jobs, etc. Right? That, your boss, you show up at 8 a.m., you work until 5 p.m. I pay you this much. Right? Employee agreement. See, we have different, different things that we call this. But ultimately, what this verse is telling us is that this puts an end to all dispute, all fighting. Well, is God really going to do what he said he's going to do? Sure don't look like it. God said, I'm putting an end to all that. <laughs> but thus God, verse 17, oh, look at this. Determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise the immutability. Immutability. Yeah, I stumbled on it. Immutability. Why did I stumble on it? Because that's what most Christians do. As they say, yeah, God's going to, he's not, he's not going to come through. I know that he says husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church, but he didn't know the witch that I married. You married her. I, you know, did you ask God? See, see where the rubber meets the road, how all of a sudden it all changes? Well, God didn't really mean that. So, see, you're not considering the fact that God is not going to change. When he gives his counsel to husbands, that counsel always stays the same, husbands. Woo! There's going to be times you don't feel it. You can sit up in here and look at any way you want to look at me, but I'm just going to tell you. You ain't always going to feel it, but you've got to, you're under command from the one who died for you to love your wife as Christ loves the church. And before you go quote the submission verse, the whole point of the submission is because you're supposed to lead the way. So if you're not leading the way, then don't say, well, she's got to submit. 
I mean, we've heard that a lot more than we've heard husbands love. Submit, woman. Love, man. There's a demand on both parties involved. Isn't that amazing? But people don't even consider the immutability of his counsel. Mm. Wow. He was determined to show it, though. So he confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Oh, get this in you. Once you see it in your covenant, you got to know this. God is not changing on his end. Have you changed on your end? I've already seen this happen with marriages, guys. People come down, and they, they'll tell me in my office, oh, we love each other so much. I'm like, okay, well, let me give you a little counsel. Oh, pastor, bless your heart. Maybe you don't know what it's like to be in love. They don't say that, but that's the way they act, right? And I'm like, no, no, I, I know that feeling. I found the one when I found Aaron. Thank God for that day I found her, but let me tell you something. I've lived a few nights and days since that day I met her. Had a few feelings. <laughs> I've had some really good ones too. I'm not, but I mean, I've had a few that weren't so good. <sighs> but I made a covenant. Amen. See, God gave us marriage. It's the closest thing to God's image. Why do you think that's under attack in our day right now? I'm just going to tell you this God isn't going to change. And He says that we might have. I like this. i got to end this. We might have strong consolation. There's strong consolation only in covenant. I'm going to stop right here, and we're going to pick up right here Sunday, but I want to tell you this. Know this, that the enemy is always, always, from now on, stop looking at just right now, from now on, going to try to get you to back away from your first love. Always. He's going to try to make it like you don't really have strong consolation. We're going to talk more about what that means Sunday. I have it here, but we'll, I want to talk about this Sunday because I want you to know this. The only strong consolation, the only strength that you truly can find in this life is in covenant with God. Well, that concludes today's broadcast, but it is not the end of Pastor Jeremy's sermon or sermon series on the real meaning of Christmas. You can find all of that online at our website, acceleratechurch.cc. There on the media tab, you'll find all the sermons Pastor Jeremy's preached. And hey, if you're in the local area, just come hear them in person. We're here Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. And we'd love to have you.